Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with Spellbinders and their February 2020 card kit of the month. And this card kit is titled Unicorn Dreams. So if you love unicorns, this is definitely, definitely your card kit. I'm going to apologize now. I am still very stuffy. I am still trying to get over what I was, um, what I had for an extremely long time. So I do apologize. So let's get started. So let's look at the contents. As always, you get your card for inspiration and also list what's inside your card kit. You get your card stock from black, purple, bright pink, light green, a golden yellow, white, light blue, a gold mirror card stock, and gray. You also will receive your 10 envelopes and your 10 standard A2 size card bases. Now remember, they are four and a quarter by five and a half and they are side folding. This is the paper pad that you will receive and we'll do a quick flip through of all the beautiful designs that are within this paper pad. Now remember, this is a paper pad. These are not thick pieces of card stock. So these are perfect for layering upon each other or on your solid card stock. You also receive your stickers. So you get some 3D stickers, some sentiment stickers, and other uh, font type sentiment stickers as well. As always, you get a um, spool, we'll call it a spool, of double-sided tape and also a square of your double-sided foam squares. And of course, you can use the entire thing. There are journal cards back into this card kit and they are double-sided, so you will have lots to choose from. And if you do uh, use a planner, they are perfect for inside that as well. You get a small pot of a mixture of pink sequins. So there's some metallics, there's pinks and so forth in there. And then of course, as always, you get this wonderful die pack that is just jam-packed with sentiments, images, bright colors, anything that you can think of. So the images can range from the actual unicorn themselves to tags, to florals, to just rainbows, and then any piece that can accent that as well. You get your stamp set, <coughs> excuse me. And this one here, those rings can actually fill in that rainbow. You have some great sentiments and you have a unicorn itself that you can um, have fun with your favorite coloring medium. And the die set actually builds a unicorn. So this will be fun. I had to definitely try that. So let's get started in our cards. So what I do love about this kit is not only all the contents that you get, but this is for any level of card maker from the beginner all the way up to the more experienced or what I like to say, you've been doing it for years and enjoying it. So you can make cards on the simplistic side, meaning let your paper do the work for you. So all I did, I took one of those pieces of pattern paper, cut it to a certain dimension, used a piece of the solid card stock to back it, which will make that pop more. And then I used one of the die cuts to give me my sentiment. And I'm just going to put that on an angle right where everything comes in as a point. Voila, our card is done. Yes, we have many techniques out there. We have all kinds of different products out there. But remember what I say, paper, adhesive, scissors, and your imagination, and you can make a card. And that in this kit allows for that. So keep that in mind. We don't have to get into anything intricate. The other thing that I love about this kit is I love to layer. Um, I am one that likes to take images with some, you know, we call it collaging. And that's what this kit allows for as well. I'm going to add some sequins just to give this a little bit of bling and shine just to fancy this card up just a bit. Is it fine the way it is right now? Absolutely. So I'm using my wax pencil to apply my sequins onto my card. I'm going to do something very similar with card number two. So I pulled a lot of the sentiments from the die cut pack. And the sentiments that I chose are speech bubbles. 
So I made sure I chose three where the speech bubble was coming in one way, and then I chose two more where the speech bubble, of course, was coming the opposite way. And I'm using the stars that are flying in. So I'm going to set this down onto my card base. And I'm using the double-sided tape that comes in with the kit. I'm going to make sure that that is adhered to the front. Now, all of my bases are cut to a standard four and a quarter by five and a half. For this one, I must have cut a little bit too short, so I'm just going to trim the card base. There's nothing wrong in doing that. The main banner says original, and I'm going to use some of the foam square pieces to prop that up. And again, that's the beauty of that block. You can use the whole thing. So now I'm going to have these speech bubbles coming in from the side of the card, and that's going to be special and loved. And then these other speech bubbles are going to come off of the stars. So I'm going to use both the double-sided foam squares, and I'm going to use my liquid adhesive to adhere them down onto my card. So again, using just the contents of the kit, um, you can definitely make more than 10 cards. Um, there's always uh, lots of extras that are still left over once I finish um, my kit. This one is going to be a 10 card from the one kit. So you will see 10 different cards. And I do apologize, and I am sniffing. I think I'm going to be doing that for a while. Okay, so for card number three, again, very simple. I'm going to take one of the journal cards. Now, I loved the sentiment on one of these journal cards. So you are so weird. That's why I love you so much. If that's something that I would say to my husband, and he would appreciate it. Yes. So again, I am one for the snarky um, type sentiments, um, only because some say I'm very sadistic and sick with some of the things that I say. So warped sense of humor, that's what I like to call it. Um, so I just thought this one was really funny. I created the, or I pulled the splatter pattern paper, and I'm just going to line the bottom of that journal card with some hearts coming off of the bottom. And then I'm going to use the double-sided tape to prop that up on an angle onto the front of this card. I do find it's easier to use a, a pokey tool to pull off that release paper. It was holding me up there for a little bit. I'm going to need to add some more sequins to this card. Again, just to add some bling, some shine to it. But not too much. So for card number four, I am going to use one of the pattern papers. I was kind of inspired by one of the cards that was shown on the inspiration card that comes with your kit, the way that they had this other piece of pattern paper cut on a diagonal from it. I, for some reason, that was very eye-catching to me, and I really liked that. So I grabbed the gold um, mirrored unicorn paper, and that's what's going to sit on top of this rainbow. So the rainbow is going to come out of that paper. Now this panel is cut to be four and a quarter by five and a half. I use, I cut a piece, a small piece of the solid purple and I rounded the corners and that's what my sentiment is going to sit on. I wanted to make sure that the sentiment stuck out. And I think if I just put the birthday on there, it would have been the white and gold on top of white and gold. Yes, I kind of threw that, but we're good. Um, and I think it would have gotten lost. 
I really stayed away from the vintage photo in this video. Yes, you will not see vintage photo. I know, shocking. I'm going to take this card, I'm going to cut it right down on an angle, and I want this to come up from underneath. I'm going to glue that directly down. I'm going to add that small sentiment of, oh my god, and then I will place the sentiment down where the unicorns are for this card. So everything kind of has its own block and will stand out. So it looks like there's a lot going on here, but your eye can get directed to each element. I'm going to use my double-sided tape again to adhere this onto my standard A2 size card base. And again, it's going to cover the um, entire front of the card. I'm going to add a sequin to the flame on the candle. And that is that one. So for card number five, again, we're going to do some layering. So I've used a solid piece of the light green, and I'm going to position this pattern paper on top of it. This is cut slightly smaller at four by five and a quarter. Now that pattern paper's got a lot going on there, but I still wanted to layer on that piece of pattern paper doesn't mean you can't but you want to have a i want it to have a base so i just cut a small rectangle again didn't even measure this may be two and a half by three maybe it doesn't have to be exact but just by putting that rectangle there it pushes the pattern paper back the pieces that I'm setting on there are going to be larger than what that rectangle is, but that's okay. For my eyes, I've got that base and I can build off of it and it's become the focal point. So you can see as I'm adding these pieces, I'm pretty much covering up that white rectangle, but in some areas I'm not. That's what's breaking up that pattern paper for me so that these pieces, you can see them. So you can see there's that little strip of white. It breaks out that, that pattern paper from the ticket. Just that little piece of white off to the right of that pink paper. Again, it's, it's pushing that pattern paper back for me so that it's allowing these to be the center and they can be seen. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to trim off that small corner and I'm going to adhere this down onto my standard A2 size card base. I do always like to check to make sure that my card bases are opening the right way. Although it does make it interesting when it doesn't. Yep, been there, done that. We're going to make a bow. I actually made a bow pretty quick this time. I think I'm getting better. Bows and I just don't get along. I'm going to add a small dab of glue to the top of that tag and set that bow down there so that that will be secured once it's dry. So for card number six, you can see I've got two pieces of dark cardstock, but I do have a very light and bright minimum pattern going on to that yellow piece of paper that I've pulled. So I'm going to have four layers going on. So I want to break up the background. And then I also, I want to break up that small journaling card, but I also do want to be able to see that as well. So they're going to be layered on top of each other. So I've put down the piece of the golden yellow. I have this next pattern paper coming off of that. And now I'm going to have the next piece of the yellow on top of the floral journaling card. And you can see by doing that, you can see each step. It's almost like you are creating a step, 
but that journal card is visible now. You can see a section of it. It's actually part of the layering that I'm going to do. So I've just added or just grabbed some other components from the um, die cut pack and I'm just going to have fun layering my pieces together. Some make it, some don't. I was really desperate for the ice cream cone, but it didn't make any of my cards. I thought it was really cute. Or maybe it did. We'll see. Oh, yeah, it does. Yeah, you think I'd know. Okay, so that's going to get set down. And then we're going to make sure that the dream catcher is going to come off of the side. And then we're going to set the books. Once that's set, I will push down onto the sentiment with the fun foam. As long as I don't press down on it, I still have the ability to move that if I wanted that to move. I'm going to set my double-sided tape in place and use my craft pick to remove the release paper and then set that down onto my standard A2 size card base. I'm going to use one of the sequins to put that in the center of the jean catcher and then the dream catcher and then a section off of the heart to help highlight that and then a corner on the books. And that is that card. So for card number seven, going to use again a very busy piece of the pattern paper and I cut a rectangle from the gray cardstock. So with these colors being so bright for the die cuts um, and the other items that I'm going to use, I thought gray would be a great choice. The blue in the pattern paper to me had a gray tone, so that's why I went with the gray. But I also wanted to make sure that the unicorn, these flowers, I was looking at the drink and the um, ice cream cone to actually come out of this as well. Uh, but then I had another idea. Yep, so we changed our minds. I still wanted the unicorn to come off out of the floral arrangement. This is where those other two items went away. So I pulled into the stamp pack and I'm going to use one of the sentiments and I'm going to put that off to the side and I'll use my white embossing powder. So using my VersaFine um, VersaMark ink and of course I prepped my cardstock first with my anti-static tool. I'm going to stamp this image down off to the side and I'm going to use my Recollections Snow Embossing Powder. And then I'm going to heat set that using my heat gun. And then once that's melted, I'll continue to, to add these pieces. So I'm going to kind of straddle the unicorn coming out of this floral design. So I'm going to prop her up to make it even. But the mane is going to flow over. So he's just going to come out of that corner there. Again, using this double sided tape, we are going to place this onto our pattern paper. I will set that in the center, even though it won't look like it's centered, only because I have those pieces coming off of the corner. But by doing that, I'm able to add my sentiment and those pieces are able to come up off of the pattern paper. 
This will actually turn into a top folding card because I did make this a landscape. I'm going to add some sequins to the center of the flowers. Again, just for some shimmer and some shine because you have to have that with a unicorn, right? Rainbows and unicorns. Gotta have it. So I'm just adding three sequins in between and I'm going to add one up by the unicorn. So for card number eight, I pulled all of the craft items. So I have the craft journaling card. I have the painter's palette, the two brushes, and then of course the sentiment banner that says create. So I cut a piece of the patterned paper with the pencils coming out of the holder, and I'm going to mat that onto a piece of the solid cardstock that came in the kit. I'm going to use my double-sided tape to get that adhered down onto my standard A2 size card base. Again, using the craft pick to remove the release paper. It's so much easier. Going to set my journaling card on an angle onto the front. And then I'm going to prop up the painter's palette with the brushes after I get those brushes through the hole. So you're able to punch out that hole. And then I'm able to set the brushes in there as if that's where they're sitting. So I'm just going to cut some pieces of the foam square and make sure that's even as I place that down onto my card. And of course, the smaller we cut our foam squares, the difficult they are to maneuver. Well, at least for me. I'm going to set that off of the corner, and then I'm going to take the Create banner and I'm actually going to intertwine that between the brushes and the palette. So just trying it different ways to make sure um, that that is secured. I am going to pull in my glitter pen and just add a little bit of glitter to the paint colors, to the tips of the brushes, and to the end of the Create banner. For card number nine, again, some more layering. So I have a piece of the pattern paper cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. I cut another piece at some very random measurement. I think this is three and a half by maybe two and a half. Again, I really don't measure. I just kind of go with it. Using my double-sided tape to put all of those layers together. I'm going to set this up onto my standard A2 size card base. And then I grabbed one of the 3D stickers. And it's the one of the unicorn. And I'm going to set that right in the center. And then I'm going to have unique intertwined underneath that. And then on top of that, I have stay. So I thought that was a very fun quote because unique's in a rainbow, unicorn, and then the stay is nice and gold. So again, simple can add so much to a card design. On the sticker pack, there are some gold hearts, and I'm going to add them. And then there is going to be one 
of the 3D hearts coming in as well, because yeah, I had to have a third gold heart. Yeah. So for the last card, now I'm, I'm going to speed this one up just a little bit more than the others once we get through this segment. So, because I'm going to construct the unicorn, and there are some, there's a lot of pieces. So it's awesome. It's like a puzzle. So what I did first was grab a piece of the white cardstock from the kit, and I just drew some fluffy clouds with a pencil. I'm using my scissors to cut these out, and then I'm going to come back in with one of my alcohol markers to just add just a light amount of shading. So I think I used BG10, and it's very pale. I think it's called Cool Shadow. You could also use a gray, you could use a blue, you could use any color you want if you want to use pink or anything like that. So here's where I'm coming in, and I'm just coming in off of the indentations. Um, nothing fancy when it comes to the coloring, just following the outline of the um, cloud. I'm going to layer these on top of each other because I want them to be the backdrop of the unicorn that I'm going to build. Now, of course, I've got all of these pieces already cut and ready to go for, to be assembled. I wanted to create those clouds in the back so that the unicorn would stand up. There's a lot going on in the background of that pattern paper. So I'm going to grab my, uh, I believe it's the C3 of my alcohol markers. And I'm just adding shading on the side. Now, again, this is nothing perfect. You can see the lines. Um, but again, I'm just adding some perfect, uh, some shading coming in so that these pieces can be, um, so that they can stand out against each other. And you can see the, you know, you can see the definition of each. So here's where I start layering. So you have this large top piece that will go over the base. You have the nose and then you have what the die also has are the, the eyes or little tiny hearts with little tiny eyelashes coming off of them, which I thought was absolutely adorable. And then of course you have the cheeks. So I chose the pink for the cheeks and I also chose the pink for the inside of the ears. Um, so the eyes and the cheeks are now set in place. I was looking at adding the eyelashes, but it just looked weird because again, I have these little, I have the eyelashes coming off and I knew I was going to set the, the mane down, coming down onto the face. So I dismissed, did not use the eyelashes, but you can. Now, this looks kind of scary right here, but it also looks like a cat, maybe, possibly. I don't know. I'm just saying. Um, but that's okay. We're going to cover this up. So I'm creating a little strip and with using the release paper, and I'm going to set the gold outline for the unicorn horn so that I can now inlay the white pieces into that area. And then I'll just cut those, the gold, the yellow piece of cardstock away. So it gave me something to stick that inlay into. And it's very easy to cut around. So you don't have to worry about any of those pieces of the yellow showing through. So now we get to have some fun with the, the main. So we're just going to play with the colors. I've got lots of colors going on here um, and lots of different ways that the main can be blowing in the wind. So I'm going to layer the horn in between the main pieces. And now we're going to work down the other side. And then we'll have some coming from the back. And again, just making sure that I've got different colors coming down. I am staying away from the pink to add to the main 
Reason being, I've got it in the cheek and the ears. Um, I didn't want that to come in. I'm taking that lap, last piece of the mane and making sure that that wraps around to the front. Again, thinking that it's glowing and flowy in the wind. Creating now more layers coming in from the back. And then going to add more layers to the front. Just because we can. Why not? Going to prop the unicorn up using some of the foam square and foam pieces. And then I'm going to set that on top of the clouds. And then I'll use my liquid adhesive to set that down onto the card. I did use the sentiment dies that also came in the kit. And what they say is stay golden. So I cut them both out of the mirror card stock and the black. So I didn't offset them, but just by putting the black behind it, helps them to stand out just a little bit more. When you just put the gold straight onto the cardstock, it could kind of get lost. Um, but again, because you can see that word stay, um, but because it's raised up with that other piece of cardstock, it does help that. I'm not looking for it to be perfectly set on top of that um, cardstock too. So if it's off a little bit, that just works into my favor going to set that down and then I also use the die to create the stars um, so I have those placed around the card as well and I'm taking my white gel pen and just adding some highlights to the cheek and also the eyes I will use my liquid adhesive to put this down onto my standard a2 size card base and there you have it our final card so I made 10 cards from the one kit, and this is the Spellbinders February 2020 card kit of the month. And the, remember, the theme is Unicorn Dreams. So again, unicorn, rainbows, bright colors, this kit definitely has it. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, the links to their blog, to their shop, to their inspiration gallery, also to all of their other value clubs that they have available on a monthly subscription for Spellbinders will be listed down below in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure you leave that down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you've already subscribed, as always, I am truly grateful and I say thank you for staying around and enjoying my videos. If you're new to my channel or if you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell and make sure you hit the thumbs up. By ringing the bell, you're sure to not miss the next video once it's live. I hope everyone's enjoying their day. Make the best of it, but always remember what's most important for me. Always be creative.